Welcome back, my friends. This is Dustin Nemos of the Nemos News Network, and I'm fresh back from the trip uh, to Miami for American Priority. Uh, the MSM hit pieces are already rolling out, of course, on the event itself, uh, trying to find desperately something to blame it for, trying to do some sort of attack. This time they've, they've picked a video. Uh, before I jump into the news, I'll, I'll give you the funny story. They've picked a short video clip. Someone played in a side room, and a third party played in a side room at the event. I don't even think um, anyone saw it. I certainly didn't see it. Uh, none of the, the major speakers saw it. And um, it was a a clip of uh, a movie, a violent movie scene, where they had uh, superimposed Trump's face onto the, the hero, and he was kind of beating up on killing all the bad guys. And, and, of course, they put fake news all over that. And we've seen these memes from time to time where they... They try to make it look like um, maybe President Trump is is uh, is beating the heck out of CNN in a, a wrestling match or something of that nature. Remember that one? And uh, of course, they always try to make it look like violent uh, or, or try to make it look like something other than satirical humor. But I do want to bring up a quick point. Remember hashtag on Republicans and all the times that they've uh, similarly done things in a, in a serious fashion with no satirical humor uh, or very, very darker, uh, I would say, um, you know, for example, Snoop Dogg, uh, point blank range shooting President Trump, uh, for example, live on stage, um, you know, during a play, they would they would uh, kill President Trump uh, instead of the, the emperor. Uh, they had replaced it with Trump. So, you know, instead of um, killing Caesar, you see President Trump being killed. So it's very interesting. Um, and, and of course, they they have a big end fight where they stab him repeatedly from from all sides, where he's just sort of mob attacked Antifa style with knives. So this is the kind of thing that you see coming out of the left, coming out of Hollywood, mainstream media, but you don't see too many Vox articles about that one. Anyway, with that said, let's dive into the news itself. And there are some juicy tidbits right after a short word from our sponsors. Hi, have you heard about Carbon 60? It's actually the most exciting breakthrough in modern healthcare or science since antibiotics. Why? Early research on carbon 60 or C60 for short has actually shown not only a doubling of lifespan in rats, but we've seen other interesting studies as well, like wrinkle repair after a number of weeks on the face or acne reduction in the number of around 86%. That's amazing and non-toxic. Many people are swearing that they're getting results. They're actually testimonies, there's interviews, there's, there's so many people and there's so much buzz around this material. Why? Because it's shown relief for so many. People who were suffering before, animals even who were suffering before, people are saying, wow, my vision's improving, I feel younger, I feel my energy improving, I can work out longer, harder, I can go on longer walks, my animal's not in so much pain anymore. If the sick care system has failed you, or those you love are suffering, even your pets. Take back your health, make your health great again, and shop Patriot at Red Pill Living, redpillc60.com. So thank you guys for supporting our sponsors. You know, it's a brave company that stands with independent media in these hard times against uh, big tech and fake news. Uh, it, it takes a lot of risks for a company to do that. So any company that's supporting White Hats and, and Patriots and uh, independent media, um, that's, that's a company I want to do business with. Uh, and that's the companies that I bring to you guys, uh, to support this channel that, um, you maybe want to do business with as well. They have great products and services like Red for Living and Q Gear. All right. So, uh, we have a lot of things to talk about and I will be very, um, brief for brevity's sake. Uh, Matt Gates was thrown out of an impeachment inquiry hearing. Um, Basically, they're trying to tinker with the rules, and uh, here we have a quote from Gates. Judiciary Committee Chairman Jerry Nadler claimed to have begun the impeachment inquiry weeks ago. Uh, quote, now his own judiciary members aren't even allowed to participate in it. And yes, my constituents want me actively involved in stopping the hashtag kangaroo court coup run by Shifty Schiff, he added. Um, and then also, Chairman Schiff and the radical Democrats are now active participants in the coup. To exclude members of Congress from hearings confirms the American people's suspicion. This is not a legitimate impeachment inquiry. It is a charade. Um, also, we have quotes. Chairman Schiff and Speaker Pelosi are equally complicit in hiding and obfuscating the truth. Blocking members of Congress from attending impeachment hearings is not only unfair, it runs counter to our democracy. 
Uh, I love how politicians throw that word democracy around like it's like it's a baby in a picture ready to be taken. You know, like, let's get that. Let's get that picture of us kissing a baby because that's important for the politics. Anyway, um, it just I don't know. I'm not bashing Gates here. I'm just bashing our use of the word democracy and how the, the left has really inserted that word where it shouldn't belong. I mean, we're not a democracy. We don't want to be a democracy. A democracy is a terrible place to live. A democracy is two wolves and a sheep voting on what's for dinner. A republic is what protects a minority, even a minority of one, the individual, which is a free person, a sovereign citizen. That's exactly what um, the minority is at the end of the day. And the republic was designed to protect the greatest minority of all, as Ayn Rand said, and that was the individual. So if you want to have your rights protected, you need a republic. If you want to have your uh, rights voted on by a large group of people whose interests are their own or their own groups and not yours necessarily, then you have to engage in the world in a different way. You have to start organizing groups and you have to get your own mob to compete with the other mobs. And if you fail to do that, the other mobs will beat you. Now, we've seen this and how organized the left and the Marxists were and how they never punched left for a long time. Now they are. They're turning on each other, but they would always sort of um, kind of coalesced against the common enemy, which is the right uh, and capitalism itself, things like that, sort of our, our way of life. So, you know, they're very good at this. It, it's gang warfare on a political sense, uh, with voting being the, the weapon, um, voting and policies and, um, you know, instead of guns for the most part. And, uh, you know, it's not a, a pleasant world to live in because a government is basically a hammer and, and then you have all these different groups competing for the government hammer to smash each other down. You know, the left is trying to get that hammer to hurt us right now. And we are we are wielding the hammer with President Trump uh, in more ways than one for those who get the inside joke there, of the Q movement stuff and the hammer. But um, we're wielding that, that political hammer now um, to smash down some pretty gross and unfair and evil practices, I would say, from the left uh, and how far they had gotten in using the hammer against us, right? They had been using government power and state power against uh, the free people like the IRS, like the FBI, like the FISA court spying on us um, it's nonstop, even our president. So, of course, we know that it's a hammer. And um, I think President Trump is, in a sense, weakening the hammer overall long term because you know, no one trusts the media anymore. That's part of it. No one trusts the uh, intelligence deep state anymore. That's certainly part of it. No one trusts the justice system anymore. That's uh, cl clearly a part of it. Uh, no one trusts the left anymore or most of the old Republicans. So, you know, it, for the most part, he's broken down the institutions of power. And um, you, you can most clearly see that in the fake news. They are uh, ridiculed, scorned, and distrusted by almost everyone now. So continuing on, uh, we also have Impeachment, the speech Nancy Pelosi wished she never gave. This is a really good clip. Um, it's it's very much on spot. Um, I guess I don't have a way to, this is the best way. All right, here we go. I want you guys to see this because you can totally use her own words against her in this instance, of course. Here we go. Proceed. Thank you. Today, the Republican majority is not judging the president with, president with fairness. <clears throat> but impeaching him with a vengeance. <clears throat> In the investigation of the president, fundamental principles which Americans hold dear, privacy, fairness, checks and balances, have been seriously violated. And why? Because we are here, to, as we are here today because the Republicans in the House are paralyzed with hatred of President Clinton, and until the Republicans free themselves of this hatred, our country will suffer. I rise to un to oppose these unfair motions which call for the removal of the President of the United States from office and in doing so wish to point out some differences between the investigation of the President and the investigation of Newt Gingrich. The first principle in our investigation of Newt Gingrich was that at the moment we found exculpatory information, it would be reported immediately to the accused and be made public. The independent counsel knew that the president was exonerated when Travelgate, Whitewater, and Filegate, and he held that information until the hearing, indeed until after the election. This was not fair. Indeed, it is the responsibility of any prosecutor to immediately release, re, um, release information that is exculpatory. 
Yes, paralyzed with hate. Um, a release exculpatory information. Those sound like wonderful arguments. In fact, they still do, uh, even today, uh, even against President Trump. So, you know, or, or I guess I, I should say for him in this case, because he... Anyway, so basically Nancy Pelosi, and, and we've seen this with others. We've seen this certainly with the Clintons. I mean, they're coming against uh, President Trump for all this Ukraine nonsense, trying to get in for, for just, you know, justly investigating corruption at the highest levels. And, and of course, the same corruption that the left has been looking into for years. They want to get to the bottom of that, that pesky 2016 interference, right? And he's looking into these things, and that's, of course, upset them. But, um, you know, President Clinton had even signed the the agreement with the ukrainians to actually have and enforce those um those sort of unilateral or or back channel police investigations and, and justice uh, department investigations into uh criminal behavior so it's you know it's just a second they're playing politics you know they they, they know and they understand the arguments they've made them themselves in the past uh passionately and well said uh, and it tells you that these are psychopaths Pelosi was smart enough to get this done back in the day. I don't know if she still is. Of course, she's a little rattled now, but, um, you know, still chose to lie, still chooses to push lies in, in spite of her own previous words. It's wonderful when you can catch them in their own in their own words. Um, and continuing on, we also have uh, Fox News escorting Shepard Smith out of the building. He was um, eliminated and, uh, well, I guess he... He supposedly resigned uh, on air and then was kicked out. So I'm sure that it's just a, a resignation and there's no coincidence to anything else or any of his recent reporting on Trump, uh, anti-negative stuff on Trump and any of these things. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, actually, I'm not sure because now that Paul Ryan and Donna Brazile and apparently uh, Megyn Kelly are coming back to Fox, um, I don't trust Fox at all. So I don't know why he's removed. But uh, what I do know is that Fox is definitely against our president. And they're the most powerful enemy out there now. No one trusts CNN anymore except to watch it for entertainment or just to make a point about how crazy they are. But frankly, I'm tired of hearing about how the, the leftist media are fake news. I mean, duh, right? And anyone that doesn't know that at this point has been uh, willfully ignorant, I would say. Um, at least to a degree, because you, it, it's really hard to avoid it. You have to be living under a pretty uh, heavy rock uh, out in the middle of the desert on an asteroid or something, um, other side of the moon, who knows. So we have also a report that more whistleblowers are reaching out to lawmakers. Additional so-called whistleblowers have reportedly reached out to congressional investigators in the wake of the House Democrats launching an impeachment inquiry that was sparked by a partisan CIA officer's mischaracterization of Trump's telephone call with the leader of Ukraine. So now we have uh, more of these folks coming out, which, of, of course, remember, we had both Brennan and Ted Cruz make that little back and forth on Twitter. Like Brennan was saying, if you know anything about Trump, come out as whistleblowers. There's no limit on who can how many can do this. And then Ted Cruz just kind of repeated it back and said, if you know anything about uh, Brennan uh, or Obama, uh, come on out and tell us. And um, it's going to be very interesting to see this uh, surge of whistleblowers now and what they all bring out. So um, there are clearly numerous whistleblowers out there and many people who possess firsthand relevant information who could come forward. And I expect some will. Zed, Mark Zed said, uh, and this is the activist attorney, uh, of course, for the CIA whistleblower that's not a whistleblower. Anyway, so they're, they're trying to, to drum up the, the endless stream of whistleblowers to continue that Russian collusion investigation just a little bit longer um, because that's all they got. Uh, delay, delay, delay. And the whistleblower thing is meant to be the next Mueller. It's going to just piss away a couple of years and waste our time and obfuscate and delay and, and obstruct and harass our president. We cannot stand for this. Um, also, continuing on, we have uh, Anna Navarro telling Rand Paul that Venezuela's Maduro is not a socialist. And then when he attempts to refute her in an honest debate, she accuses him of mansplaining. Uh, mansplaining is a I live in Miami. There's tens of thousands of Venezuelan exiles living there. You talk a lot about Venezuela in, right. your, new, in your new book. I get a lot of... Um, uh, 
a lot of political <laughs> ads from the Republican Party. Donald Trump has tweeted this. Many have tweeted this. If you vote for Democrats, you, they will turn the United States into Venezuela. Do you think that's a fair statement to make? Well, if you vote for a socialist, you might get socialism. Come on, don't do that. Maduro is not a socialist. He's a, he's a corrupt, well, murderous thug who is starving his well, people. That's not it's, true. That's yeah, not oh, true. that's not true? Maduro's not a thug well, and a murderer no, it's not who's true. starving his people? Let's, let's have a conversation here. Chavez was a socialist, and socialism was the economic system and of they Venezuela. Stole. They are, it's and a kleptocracy. So, it's yeah, know, not but socialism. The, but, but here's the question is, they voted for socialism. They voted for, Let uh, me finish. No, I let, can't let, let you finish. If you're going to say Maduro is not a murderous thug, Wait, but, and I've got a bunch of neighbors and friends who know this. Don't do this to me. Don't mansplain. I'm a 47-year-old girl. Thanks to Senator Rand Paul. His new book is called The Case Against Socialism, and we'll be right back. Yeah, the case against socialism, indeed. Don't you mansplain to me about how evil socialism is. Uh, she basically is saying... And, um, you know, it is. It, it, communism, socialism. Socialism is just the path to communism, ultimately. Um, the ultimate goal of socialism is communism. I think that was Lenin. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, socialism is just the path there. And it, it has led to, with communism, socialism, fascism, which are all sort of flip sides of the same thing, authoritarian dictatorships, you know. Um, they just work slightly differently in, in sort of the, the way that they present themselves and the path that that corruption takes, but no differently in the corruption or in the, the, the genocidal evil tendencies, except communism probably wins the death toll by far. Um, and communism is killed in that death toll, as our president has reminded us, over 100 million people in the last century alone. That's a good chunk of the world that we'll never know. Brothers, sisters, cousins, fathers, mothers... Um, 100 million souls. And that's not to even include all of the aborted now that are being pushed by the left. So that's just those who died from democide, which is a word you don't hear often, uh, which is genocide by your government, mass murder by a government. Uh, still today, one of the greatest leading causes of death and, uh, and disease and, and uh, injury. Uh, well, maybe not injury. I don't know. They usually just kill you in that case instead of hurt you but certainly uh, death and disease and starvation, um, which I guess they just all go together, the holodomo and, and other situations of that nature. Um, confirmed, Ilan Omar and lover Tim Minat were seen at the Minnesota Trump riots. Ooh, photos and video and facial recognition, uh, recognition confirmation. So the allegation here is that these two and, and this is Ilhan Omar, and, and of course Omar is not her real name, but um, she is apparently helping lead in this um, protest, if you will. Let's check out the video. <laughs> there she is. You see that at the bottom there. Now they've matched this up. So, interesting. And then they found this. Well, not found. They made this, to be honest. You can kind of see the comparisons. You can kind of see the comparisons here. So a lot of people are making this. Uh, and, of course, here's him. And a lot, you know, a lot of people, he, he doesn't matter as much. He's just a, a kind of a no one except for, you know, his 15 minutes of fame right now because of being involved with Elon. But he was being involved with this uh, and this sort of dressing up and creating the news situation is exactly what Antifa and the communists and the left have been doing. Uh, example, Jesse Smollett, um, you know, so we have, we certainly have plenty of examples of this. So um, do we know for sure? No. But is it really close? Absolutely. Uh, is the allegation very strong? Look, this is verifiable, I think. A real uh, professional like government facial recognition would 
probably confirm this, that the, they could probably um, be exposed for this for sure. I definitely think it's worth bringing up to people's attention though. And um, yeah, continuing on. Hunter Biden releases statement, will step down from Chinese backed private equity firm, but will keep his money, <laughs> of course. Oh, and, and by the way, with Jesse Smollett, going back to that briefly, remember um, uh, Kamala Harris, who is badly, but is performing as a presidential, presidential candidate for 2020 for the Democratic side, was involved in campaigning with the anti-lynching law that Jesse Smollett got passed with his fake news uh, attack and his illegal um, lie. So this is not something that's new to the Democrat party, uh, certainly not. Um, or, by the way, to fake news, we've caught them staging things too, like uh, protests and stuff and coaching people through it, remember CNN. So continuing on, we have, speaking of CNN, I didn't plan this, it was just in the right schedule, I guess, uh, in the right rotation or order. The biggest story Project Veritas has ever broken. James O'Keefe drops a bomb, announces Project Veritas has undercover videos from CNN. And uh, indeed they did. Indeed they did. They let them out. Um, so we'll get to that as well at the end. But it's a 20-minute video, so I'm just going to, at the end, I'll play the first couple seconds and leave you a link. Um, Central Bank issues stunning warning. Guys, this is a big deal for those who are paying close attention. This is the Dutch Central Bank, okay? The Nederlandish Bank. I don't know how to say it. Uh, but they said that, quote, if the system collapses, the gold stock can serve as a basis to build it up again. Gold booster bolsters confidence in the stability of the central bank's balance sheets and creates a sense of security. So um, the fact that they are coming this close to just telling you to get gold I mean, this is for the intelligentsia class. This is where uh, those in the know start to hint at it for those in the know who are paying attention. But it's not like they're going out and telling people at the local grocery store, look, guys, you better get some silver and some gold and some storable foods and stuff before shit hits the fan. No, they don't. They don't do that. And I've got some static noises here with my with my mic. Um, continuing on, I've got a few more I want to cover before we get to that video. Um, we have, of course, the, the big impeach Trump poll from Fox News was a lie. Um, it was based on, and, and even the New York Post is releasing the analysis that says that Fox News had misrepresented their polls. So, you know, even other uh, MSM types are, are kind of covering it. But they released a poll, Fox News, uh, this week, which found that 51% of registered voters wanted President Trump impeached and removed from office while 4% want Trump impeached but want him to stay in office, and 40% of voters oppose impeachment. This is a lie. Um, anyway, so this is a supposed double-digit increase in the number of voters who wanted Trump impeached and removed from office. Of course, we know that's BS. We know that's a lie, and we know that the Democrats uh, were oversampled dramatically in this poll. So, of course, it's going to come out that way. Uh, and of course, we had Rashida Tlaib kind of reiterating that uh, they are willing to jail President Trump's allies if they don't comply with the impeachment uh, inquiry, witch hunt, although, of course, they won't let uh, Republicans into the hearings, things like that. Now, we have CIA whistleblower uh, not willing to testify. Um, you know, his, his lawyer said he's not willing to testify under oath. So uh, he wants to do a written deposition and uh, yeah, a written statement. And, um, you know, the shift's whole story is falling apart. We also have a 2,000-strong caravan uh, of migrants and including migrants from Africa. How did they even get over here to South America um, in order to, to walk this caravan? They were stopped. Uh, they were headed for the United States only a few hours into their journey and they were stopped. They left before dawn on Saturday from Tapachula, a southern Mexico town near the Guatemalan border. Well, many of the migrants who departed from Tapachula had been held up there for weeks or months, awaiting residency or transit papers from Mexican authorities. About 24 miles into their journey, federal police and National Guardsmen blocked their path. Most of the group was detained and put on a bus back to Tapachula, while about 150 migrants returned by foot, witnesses said. Ooh, it's getting better. We're stopping them finally. And there's millions pouring across. 2,000 nothing to drop in the bucket, but it's a step. It's, a, it's at least a sign. Let's get that wall finished. 
California Governor Gavin Newsom uh, signs a bill forcing public universities to dispense abortion drugs. Uh, we also have, which are really, un, really hard on women's body, by the way, uh, really bad. Now, this is worth an interesting mention uh, in the China thing. So Xi Jinping from China, the, the emperor of China, I don't care if you call him president or whatever, he's an emperor for life now, uh, attempts to divide, he says that attempts to divide the country will end in crushed bodies and shattered bones. So here's the thing, um, and this was said in Nepal, but here's the thing, Chinese people, and, and I'm a layman here, just kind of watching politics from the side, and uh, you know I'm married to one, but Asian people, Chinese people especially, they have something kind of called uh, face, and, and it's similar to here, uh, where you have your, your, your public image, your public profile, and you will viciously defend it, and face is very important. Uh, reputation is very important in Chinese culture, and they also um, have a tendency in their in their war games and in their battles and such. And you've seen it. President Trump does the same thing to pretend to be friendly with folks. You know, to be very polite, uh, to be very um, kind to the face, and then traitorous behind. Like very ruthless negotiators, very ruthless uh, people in some cases. And that's not because of the race. That's because of Mao and. and excuse me, the Communist Chinese Party killing like 100 million people almost. So, um, or I think it was more with them. It was it was like 60 million, I think, with them. I can't remember the number. It was bad. And, and some of those numbers are disputed. But and, and in some cases, they boil people alive and ate them. I'm not even joking. You don't hear about that one, though. So the Communist Party basically killed or ran off everyone that wasn't a communist. And communism itself is ruthless. And the system and the incentives that it creates create ruthless people. But digression. Um, it is very unusual to see Xi Jinping uh, use a violent threat. This, I think, would sort of, my opinion, uh, be a sign of weakness. This is a sign of fear and weakness, because generally speaking, you wouldn't see him do things like this. You'd see them bolster and make some sort of, you know, um, brave statement and, and sort of a, you know you're you're stupid or you're silly or you're you're wrong or or this is uh immoral or they'll try to maintain the moral image and stuff crushed bodies and shattered bones is not the moral image that is a threat outright overt threat of violence and uh it seems that that would be a sign of weakness for chinese culture and for xi jinping himself just my thought though i've noticed uh his patterns don't generally include this and also, of course, we have President Trump signing executive order to impose sanctions and visa bans on Turkey. So, of course, Turkey has been this sort of gateway and keeps threatening to, to unleash the flood of migrants on the world if they don't get their way in various areas. And, uh, you know, Erdogan, or I guess, is trying to, you know, create an empire for himself, which fine for him. But this is um, this is a step up, you know, uh, Sanctions are a war. Sanctions are, are an act of war. Uh, sanctions are someone putting a, a fence around your house and says that no one can visit, bring you food, bring you water, bring you anything without permission, or they're going to get hurt or punished. So in a sense, you know, it's like it's like a nonviolent, passive aggressive act of, of, of assault. And, um, you know, I'm not downing Trump or anything like that if we're going to go against Turkey in, in this way, but that it is very serious. So we have a quote uh, from Pompeo. Uh, let's see. To avoid suffering further sanctions imposed under this new executive order, Turkey must immediately cease its unilateral offensive in northeast Syria and return to a dialogue with the United States on security in northeast Syria. So, of course, they're fighting the Kurds. And, and uh, now that the U.S. is moving a little bit further away from that, uh, it's going to allow them to kill each other again, which is what the Middle East has always been doing. And... Um, Leaving last, but certainly not least, and I'll do a standalone video about this one, but um, definitely want you to see this video. I will leave the link in the description below, um, and I want you guys to, to enjoy because we finally even have inside footage into CNN and, of, and their bias against President Trump and Jeff Zucker and uh, many people on camera and uh, many employees at CNN. And remember also, um, Pres Project Veritas has a, a very clear history of using the bait and uh, and kind of 
lulling them into a fight and then just upping the ante with new information that they hadn't released yet. So this is going to be just the first little bit of CNN clips. They have uh, quite a few people with undercover footage, I'm sure, or months of it. So we're going to keep seeing as 2020 rolls up the the counterattacks the Patriots have been uh, preparing for. So CNN, fake news, and big tech have been building their, their algorithms to stop us. But you know, groups like Project Veritas have been going undercover to reveal them and, and, and biding their time until right before 2020 to destroy these fake news credibility uh, once and for all. Um, so, you know, we're also setting up here. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention at Nemos News Network. We're, we're trying to organize the StopBitBurning.com coalition against censorship, where we invite other influencers and, and in independent third party or not third party, but independent media types and and, uh, you know, just voices, as I call them, if I'm simplifying it down, but, you know, voices who have reach on the Internet who are being censored or, or even just care about free speech, um, because if we got a bunch of those together, we could reach 10, 20 million people um, consistently on a regular basis. And uh, all we then have to do is talk about the lawsuit and we would be able to fund it even against the big guys like Google and stuff, because it's going to cost hundreds of thousands to get started. It's going to cost millions overall. But what's that to 10 or 20 million patriots? That's a buck each, guys. We can do this. So I will see you guys on the next one. Dustin Nemos out and enjoy this little clip teaser. Hey, then, then, then. Morning, everybody. Um, you did. Okay, let's start with Washington, please. I, I, I don't care about the OSM in the event. Okay, I don't care about them. Let's just stay very focused on impeachment. Uh, my name is Kerry Porch. I'm a satellite uplink technician. I'm a contractor at the CNN Washington, D.C. Bureau. But Jeff Zucker, yeah, basically president of CNN, has a personal vendetta against Trump. It's not going to be positive for Trump. He hates oh, him. Yeah, He's yeah, going to yeah. be negative. Uh, I decided to wear... There you go. There you have it. He hates him, and as we knew already. All right, guys, and you know, they have history. They go back. Um, that's it for now. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you found value, please support this channel. Please go to donorbox.org slash Dustin Nemos. Contribute, you know, 15 16 maybe $17 a month if you're, uh, you know, finding value in this and you want to continue what we're doing here, uh, continue what we're able to, to sometimes go to these events uh, and, and do some very important networking. This is... Um, it's not a word you hear often, but how do you get together and do things like a, 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 a massive class action lawsuit versus big tech without some networking? So this kind of thing is also very important on the actual uh, the fight end and on the mission end and kind of supporting the movement. And of course, the actual, you know, the news reporting itself, uh, getting information out there and bringing it down for you guys. Uh, that's also part of what we do here. So there's a lot of irons in the fire, so to speak. But if you want to continue those, definitely yeah, contribute. Uh, and if you donate, it also allows you into our, our private uh, Discord chat room for donors where we can have a conversation and discussions. And it also allows you to kind of make some suggestions in terms of uh, which areas to focus on in the show, which areas you'd like to see more developed. Um, you know, there's a, a short question uh, and, and answer list on the donation form. So you can kind of tell me this is where I like, this is what I like, what I don't like. So that's also very important. Feedback is, is very helpful as we uh, continue to grow the Nemos News Network concept and, and the StopBitBurning.com campaign to end censorship. And uh, also now, you know, it's starting to get going. I should talk a little bit more about it. The White Hat Movement. Uh, the White Hat Movement .com, I've, I've talked to you guys about the White Hat Movement before, but, um, you know, briefly, for those who don't know, and, and maybe, you, maybe you remember, uh, the White Hat Movement came from uh, a guy named John. Now, John is, uh, and he'll admit this, fine, he's nobody, uh, he's not on social media, no one knows who he is, he's not a public figure, he's a good guy, and he's a patriot, um, but, you know, no one knows him, and he had this great idea to create a movement of white hats, of good guys, and uh, he, he kind of passed that torch to me to continue that, since, you know, I have somewhat of a public image, and I'm, I'm out there getting the word out about things. And um, the way that I've taken that that white hat movement, and I, the way that I see that it could do the best in the world uh, in terms of doing good, is to combine uh, all of the white hats into a new sort of system. And that means we could have a uh, a marketplace for white hats to support white hat owned companies. And uh, you know, white hat is good guys that support free speech. So you could have good guy companies that support free speech, 
and our good guy audiences that support free speech going through the good guy media that desperately need funding because we've been demonetized and cut off. So this is a way for us to advertise on our channels again after YouTube has cut us off and eliminated us uh, from all of the other options and after the others in some cases have even eliminated bank accounts. All right, I forgot, I've got to call Laura Loomer and, and ask her about this as well because I told her I would and I talked to her about the bit burning concept after I get off the phone or after I get off the video with you guys. But, you know, this is important and, um, and we have an opportunity to do something about it. So, uh, yes, the stop bit burning thing is very important, but the white hat movement is equally important because one is an attack on censorship itself. And one is a reinforcement, uh, supply lines to the people that are out there fighting on the front lines. And in many cases, taking risks, uh, you know, Laura lost her bank account. And of course she's been defamed, attacked by others. I, I've been defamed and attacked by pretty much the entire MSM media at this point myself, uh, things like that. So of course these people also take the risk of, of maybe never being able to get jobs again uh, in the leftist world if, if we lose this fight. I mean, there's there's a lot of going into this. So if you want to uh, support the whitehatmovement.com and maybe sign up as uh, an audience member that just wants to shop Patriot in the future, shop White Hat, there's a, a mailing list there to sign up on. There's a short video to kind of describe what I've just talked about. Um, and then there's also a way for companies to sign up. And I'll be brief about this and I'll do a standalone video at another time. But as companies uh, themselves, you know, white hat companies, products and services and things online decide that they want to support uh, independent media against the, the Goliath bullies out there, uh, they get tapped into our huge marketplace. You know, I don't I don't uh, want to brag often, but, you know, we sure can sell some things on this uh, truth media. We have millions of people in our audience. We have. We have tons of, of traffic and, and loyal people that really want to support what we're doing and they don't have many good options. You know, I've got we've got a couple of companies in the White Hat movement now. We have redpillliving.com, for example, and that's that's a wonderful uh, health supplement company. And they proudly stand with the White Hat movement and they proudly support White Hat media and, and independent voices and and anyone that's being censored because they have taken an oath. The White Hat movement pledge to, to never censor lawful speech. Um, and that simple oath, which seems fairly benign and, and simple and easy to, to agree with, right? And who wouldn't agree to that? That's going to separate a lot of good guy and bad guy companies because some of them don't like that idea. Some of them love to sell your information and, and exploit you and censor you. And those companies are not going to be welcome in our white hat movement marketplace. So we're going to establish this marketplace for millions of people. And uh, it's already in the works. And uh, if you're a company that's interested in having your products or services advertised on channels like mine uh, in the dozens, if not hundreds, then please reach out uh, through whitehatmovement.com. There's a sign up place for companies as well. So you guys know what to do. Um, you know, if in addition to supporting what we're doing here at the Nemos News Network, if you want to uh, help the bit burning campaign there uh, on stopbitburning.com, again, short animated video will get you caught up. It's one minute. And uh, there's a donation option there as well. Um, you know, I've, I've spent uh, five figures so far uh, in the attorney costs and in getting us to this point where we have a viable path to attack big tech on, on the censorship issue. Um, we have a viable path forward, legally speaking. We have actually four, I think, if I recall correctly, four approaches that we could take to sue the crap out of them for what they have done to us. And uh, all of those are on the list. Uh, we have one that stands out, class action. And uh, we will be convening again um, within a week or so with some of the influencers in a private session. I've talked to you guys about the first one we did. It went very well. Uh, a lot of interest was garnered. The attorney was present. We had a Q&A session and, and broke down some of those options. But we've also now uh, are going to reach out to more. If you hear my voice now, you're one of the people we're reaching out to. Um, I want you to to reach out and I want you to even if possible, invite other influencers, uh, even if possible, invite other shows that you like. And if they, if you've heard them talking about it, especially like their shoe ends, if, if they're out there saying, um, please, uh, we need to do something about censorship or we need to organize, or we need to get together or what do we do about censorship? Or I'm so tired of censorship, or I don't know what to do. They're banning my channel and I don't have money to pay bills, things like that. So whatever it may be, wh wherever they are on that spectrum, I would like for you to invite them to be part of stopitburning.com. 
and to come to that uh, meeting. And I'm um, switching back to this camera, um, kind of on two different camera setups, and I'm still kind of playing with the technology here, guys. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed, and I will see you on the next one. Dustin Nemos out.